So big news, big news today is uh, that uh, Bernie Sanders has dropped out of the race. He has dropped out of the race. So, so what do we do now? Is the progressive movement over? Do we just do? Do we just throw our hands up in the air? Do we do we put our heads into the sand like the ostrich uh, and just and just say fuck it and we're done? Do we do we quit? Do we vote for Joe Biden? Do we do we vote for Donald Trump? Do we vote for third party? Uh, look, those those answers um, I don't have. I can't give. I can't tell you what you should do. Um, just as you shouldn't tell me what I should do, right? That those those are some those are kind of personal decisions that I think um, you know people are gonna people are gonna make on their own. And quite and for me, quite frankly, um, I'm not gonna make that decision till it comes to voting day. Um, if I choose to participate, it'll be it'll be a decision that I make on that day. Uh, if I choose to vote for a candidate, it, which candidate it'll it'll be is will be on that day. So. But what I can tell you, what I do believe in, is that uh, the movement is not over. The movement's not over. Uh, the movement is now uh, on us. You know, um, it's it's on us. The we we are uh, we are what drives the movement. We are uh, we are the people that uh, make the decisions on how we want to improve our lives. Right. Um, so. The, the reason why Bernie became as powerful as he did, as, as popular as, as he became, as um, you know, dangerous to the establishment as he became, was because of us. Uh, Bernie was consistent with his message for 40 years. For 40 years, he kept saying virtually the same thing, right? He was on the side of the worker. He was preaching this, democ this, this social democracy, democratic socialism idea, um, you know, within the United States. He's been preaching. He's been talking about that for 40 years. He was on the Medicare for all train uh, fucking 40 years ago. He's just been, con he, you know, and there's been a couple things here and there, um, like the war in Afghanistan he voted for. And then he, you know, he was like, I was wrong about that. Uh, Barbara Lee was the only person that um, voted against that. And she and he said that she was right on that. Um but for 40 years, he's been consistent and the establishment has virtually ignored him. When did they have to pay attention to him was when we started paying attention to when we decided that what Bernie Sanders was saying was, you know, the right thing, that, that this this is the fight, that this is the movement, that what this guy has been talking about is is what we need to do all along. Right. That's that's really what made him popular. So when the people stood up and supported a candidate like Bernie Sanders, it made him more popular. It gave him the, the 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 strength that he needed. It created a movement surrounding this person. But but what we can't forget is that we are the movement. So just because Bernie Sanders has dropped out doesn't mean that that the fight for Medicare for all has ended. That the fight for 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 the working class has ended. That that fight still keeps going. And now it's just we carry that torch, the torch that we lit up in the first place. So, you know, what we should do now uh, is there's a lot of people that criticize Bernie and I, and rightfully so. And I, I was one of those people that criticized Bernie as well um, in, in the sense that I didn't think Bernie was being as forceful as he possibly could have been and should have been, quite frankly, um, towards Joe Biden and any of the establishment candidates. I think he was kind of forceful, right? There, there are some clips of like someone like Tim Ryan who shouldn't have been in the fucking race to begin with. Um, he was kind of like, put, you know, I, I wrote the damn bill, like all that sort of stuff. Um, that was great. And those were great little media grab bite moments uh, that, uh, that, you know, but Bernie Sanders, that, that made Bernie Sanders even make bigger of an icon. But now, you know, we got to keep the torch lit and keep it going. We got to keep that. We got to keep the movement forward because I'm seeing a lot of people that are just like, oh, I guess I got to vote for this sexual abuser. And it's like, no, you don't. You don't have to fucking vote for the sexual abuser. Like, why would you why would you support a system that supports someone like Joe Biden? You know, that 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 spent fucking. OK, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> I don't want to lose my train of thought. What we need to do is stop looking for heroes to come save us because the reality is we are going to save each other. That's always how it's been. Whenever core, like whenever real change and whenever real difference has been driven, it hasn't been driven because 
the leadership decided to do that because some hero came out to do that. It, it came because we decided to take the change on for ourselves. And, uh, and that's what we did. Uh, and, you know, like the labor movements are all about that. We, we got an eight, we got all the eight hour work day, the weekend, all the stuff, because we came together, we organized as a people and we fought back against that shit. Uh, so we have to, uh, even in this situation, right? It's, it's people leaning on other people that really saved us. It wasn't, it wasn't any sort of candidate. It wasn't any sort of, um, you know, one mascot of an idea that, that, that came down to save us, you know, and, and Bernie said a lot of great things. And what Bernie said was kind of the things that we needed to do, right? He, it was kind of the plan that we needed to enact at that point, but he wasn't really, he, he voted for the same fucking stimulus bill that gave us nothing. So did AOC, so did Rashida Tlaib, and then they went out and talked smack on it. And if you were going to talk smack on it, why wouldn't you oppose the bill and really stand up for the people and say that, no, you need to actually have provisions for the American working class, for every single citizen and working class American, that, and whatever the job is. They should be getting. They should be taken care of over Wall Street. You shouldn't be giving Wall Street. They didn't because they were like, "Oh, but the optics isn't good." That's what they give a shit about. Is the oh, is the optics good? Am I gonna? Is this gonna be a PR thing? Am I gonna look good after all this? So you know, but but who really stood up for each other? We did, right? Uh, but when when I announced that I had lost, like. Well, now it's it's you know we're we're looking at I'm I'm looking at losing most of May as well, um, but when I when I initially lost about six weeks of work, people came out. I mean, they immediately joined my, um, but there was a bunch of people that joined my Patreon. There was a bunch of people that gave me individual contribution. A bunch of people that downloaded my album, started sharing my stuff around. People did that, and we have to continue that same spirit because in reality that's where we're at that we need each other to support each other um that's that's where we're at the 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 other thing that that i know is going to come out of this because it because it did in 2016 and everything about this election so far has been a carbon copy of it with a couple of different players right it's basically the same game um you know, I, I think Tulsi Gabbard got a lot of the same treatment that Bernie Sanders got in 2016 uh, with the addition of Russiagate um, and Bernie. So, you know, they, they couldn't ignore Bernie this time. He was. But so they so they ran smear campaigns against him. They vilified him uh, with this socialism bullshit. This what are we going to tell people about this Medicare for all bill? when they're gonna lose all their health insurance and then also gain health insurance because that's what the fuck Medicare for all is. You know, you have Harry Reid and Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi saying stupid arguments like that. Oh, but you're gonna lose your health insurance and then regain it back because that's what fucking Medicare for all is, you psychos. Like that's, you know, they gaslit the shit out of them. Um, so my prediction is that we're gonna see a lot of vote shaming. I'm already seeing it, by the way. I'm already seeing it. There's a lot of these people that are coming out and already kind of shitting on people for saying that they're not going to vote for Joe Biden. Which is crazy to me. Like, why would you do that? That's so fucking crazy. Re look, here, here's, here's the reality of how this shit should work, right? Um, one, there should be a reason that I should want to vote for a candidate other than party affiliation. I shouldn't vote for a candidate just because they're a Democrat or just because they're a Republican. What do they stand for? What are their ideals? What are their belief systems? And how are they actually going to fight for me? And if you can't answer that question, which I think when it boil when you boil it down, there, you know, some people might come out and be like, "Oh, well, Joe was part of the Obama administration, uh, and he legalized gay marriage. Why the fuck did it take so long for America to legalize gay marriage in the first place? And why was it illegal?" Why? Because the religious right was scared? What the fuck? And he also did it at the heels of approving the, the TPP, which is one of the worst fucking trade bills that's ever been uh, ever been written. You know, there, there's not a lot of reasons that somebody should want to vote for Joe Biden. There just isn't. And party affiliation, just because Joe Biden has a D by his name, doesn't make him any better. The party should work for the people, not the other way around. We shouldn't be enslaved to the party. 
the party should be a, an act of representation of us, and it's not. The Democratic Party is not a representation of the people. They claim that they are, and they make a lot of platitudes to say that they will. But look at what they just did in the in the 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 face of a global pandemic. They just they bailed out corporations again. They repeated two thousand eight, which we never came out of. We never really came out of that depression. We tried, but there were more and more people in debt at that point. I think the Democratic Party is officially dead at this point. The Democratic Party is dead. The two-party system is dead. I think basically what we've revealed in the course of these last four years and, and with this news right here is, you know, that there is no two-party system. We're given one party to choose, choose two candidates from. That's essentially what it is. What's the difference between a Democrat and a Republican? Oh, you know, it's the tie that they wear, I guess. That's really it. Neither of these parties go to bat for you. There's no difference between the party. You could, I mean, there was a point where even I could come out and say, well, you know, at least the Democrats stand for the working class people. Well, they don't. Proof after proof after proof. Obama was the reason why 08 happened. He bailed out the banks. Quantitative easement happened for the banks. They made up money for, for, for Wall Street. And millions of people lost their homes. That was under a Democrat. We increased wars under a Democrat. So I'm not saying this to sit there and say, well, I'm going to vote for Trump because fuck that guy. Right. This and that's another argument that the Democrats love using. So what are you going to do? You're just going to vote for Trump. No, I'm not going to vote for Trump. I'm going to find a better candidate. And if I don't have a better candidate, guess what? This new citizen, somebody that got their citizenship specifically to vote for either Tulsi Gabbard or Bernie Sanders has no reason to participate in your sham of a system. The Democratic Party is officially dead. If, if they're going to prop up someone like Joe Biden, they, they make all these claims against Trump. He's a liar. He's a cheat. He's, he's, a, he's a, a, a misogynist and a sexual abuser. He's a racist. He's all these things. All of those things apply to Joe Biden. You literally picked a carbon copy of Donald Trump to be your fucking presidential candidate because you thought that's going to win. Joe Biden stood against civil rights and with racist segregationists in the 60s and hasn't apologized for it. He continues to be super proud of that moment. Joe Biden it has, has uh, sexually abused a woman just because she worked for him. That was his reason. You worked for me, and I thought you liked me, so I guess I'm going to forcibly round all the bases. And then when, when that doesn't happen, he calls her nothing. Like, this is Joe Biden. And of course he was shitty to Anita Hill about it, because he did the exact same thing that Anita Hill was accusing uh, Clar Clarence Thomas, I think, uh, was was who... You know, he was going after. He attacked a, U a UN weapons inspector so that he could continue his war on Iraq that he voted for, that he championed, that he said was necessary. I mean, the list goes on. He's, he's in the face of a pandemic refusing Medicare for all. He literally said, it, my, my mind is not changed on Medicare for all. The, yeah, profit-driven healthcare systems seem to be the right thing to do in the space of a global pandemic where people have to stay at home and lose a bunch of their jobs. That seems to be the right thing to do, Joe. And when people ask a question to Joe, like there was a live stream about it I brought up earlier this week where uh, there was a, a couple that was like, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm kind of lost here. When, when our savings runs out, do we give up rent? Do we give up food or do we give up health care? And he was like, well, you shouldn't give up any of those things and you should continue paying those things. It's like, they don't fucking have money, Joe. Are you, are you that fucking out of touch that you don't understand how uh, like finances work? That are, have you like not had to worry about money that long that you don't understand what dipping into your savings account actually means? Like, that's crazy. He also has dementia. 100%. 100% has dementia. What the DNC is doing is technically elder abuse. But they chose him because he's a carbon copy of Trump with the with Democratic face that's attached to Barack Obama, which was status quo. And I will remind you that Biden being the face of the status quo means that the status quo is a corrupt, corporate, warmongering rapist. That's what the status quo is. That's what people want to go back to. 
the era where we don't have to think about this thing because there's some letter that associates itself with we don't have to give a shit. If people want to go back to complacency, once again, I have bad news. Complacency is gone. There's no more time for complacency. There's no more place for complacency. We're not going to go back to that. The new normal moving forward is us fighting for our rights. Not in the face of the Democratic Party, not alongside the Democratic Party, but against it because the Democratic Party is dead. So don't sit there and voter shame people. Don't sit there and yell at people. Educate people on what this really is. Educate people on who Joe Biden actually is. Because Joe Biden is the face of the status quo. And the status quo meant that a lot of people lost their homes. A lot of people lost their jobs. People, were, people went, went on a xenophobic attack. America was so complacent that it allowed the rich and the powerful to gain, gain more power and fuck over the American working class. That we need to stand in solidarity, not with a party, but with each other. And I don't know what the solution is. Third party, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at a lot closer into the Green Party uh, and the Libertarians, I guess. And ignoring that, by the way, if you come out and say, oh, voting for third parties and vote for Donald Trump, well, you don't understand how the duopoly works then. I mean, that's what it is. It's a duopoly. It's, it's two parties. It's, it's one party masquerading as two is really what it is. And that's what we're living in. So it's time to do some research. Time to, time to not back it. Because every, every dollar that went to Bernie Sanders, that went to Andrew Yang, that went to Tulsi Gabbard, them all in, uh, dropping out and endorsing Joe Biden, which I will guarantee you that Bernie Sanders will in, endorse Joe Biden too. Not immediately, but he will wait till the convention, which has been delayed till August. So around August time, that's my, that's my delayed guess. If I was If I was looking at the pattern of things, he got so much flack and so much shit for not endorsing Hillary Clinton fast enough, which was, what, two months ago that that story came out? Like, two months ago? Um, you know, he might do it faster. He might do it in two weeks. He might sit there and say, well, I got to think and we're doing an assessment and all this other shit. But I would say that he's going to endorse Joe Biden, whether it be in two weeks, whether it be in August. He will do it. He's already made an agreement to do it. He already said that he would um, nominate the uh, or, or he would endorse the nominee regardless of who it is. And then he also went on national television and said that Joe Biden was was an electable president. Joe Biden's brain's falling out of his head. I'm not saying that as a joke. I'm saying that as a legitimate medical condition that needs to be taken into account. And this whole tough man, this strong man bullshit that Joe Biden likes to do is not going to play. It's not going to help the situation. It's going to make it worse. Joe Biden and Trump are no different. It's just Trump takes a bunch of amphetamines to keep whatever slush of a brain that he has intact so that it can say more bombastic shit. And Joe Biden is not. So, I, you know, I don't know what the future is, but I know the future is not the Democratic Party. <laughs> All right, let's 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 take a look at um, what you guys are saying. Jen, hello, Jen. Uh, the struggle to stay positive is real. Indeed it is. It is. I was pretty, I was pretty uh, you know, momentarily heartbroken. I will, I will say I think I was a little bit more heartbroken about Tulsi Gabbard than I was uh, about Bernie Sanders because I expected this. I expected them to kind of go hard um, and, uh, uh, you know, push back against Bernie the way that they did. So, yeah, but I mean, it, this, it is, but I had to kind of think about it and be like, well, no, I, you know, who, who have I always depended on, you know, is, is the people is just average, average shows like, like you guys, you know, coming out and checking out these, these live streams and, and watching my live stand up comedy show. It's not like Bernie Sanders is buying a ticket to come see someone like me or Ron Placone or Lee Camp or anything like that. It's you guys. So as long as as long as we're we're going to stick with each other, as long as we are going to support each other in any way that we can, whether it's it's morally, spiritually, financially, you know, uh, just just lending each other an ear, we're we're going to get through this. We're going to get through this. Uh, I firmly believe that. 
Matthew Sims. Hello, Matthew. Uh, the torch is lit for revolution. I agree. I think it is. Um, and and the next two stories are kind of about that. So I hope I hope you're sticking around the live stream to to check out uh, the the other two stories that we have. Um, Jen, uh, I don't know anymore. Hashtag nobody twenty twenty. I've I've thought about it. I'm not going to blame anybody for not voting. You know what I mean? It's just uh, I made that decision in 2016. Is um, I will not uh, I will not trash anybody um, for who they choose to vote for, uh, but rather sit down and try to have a conversation about why they made the choice that they did. That's uh, that's sort of the way that I like to approach it, um, and uh, you know I, I think it's worked out so far. Uh, as the peasants scramble to choose the king. Uh, that is the greatest likelihood of allowing them to eat. Yeah, allowing them to eat is the key key phrase there, Jen. Um, you know why why should it be that somebody is allowing you to eat? Why shouldn't f being able to eat just be the fundamental right of eating? You know, deer doesn't have to ask permission to eat the grass, right? It just it just does. But and that's you know that's kind of the way that it should be. We should be granted these fundamental rights, and and right th at the moment we're we're impassionedly fighting for them uh, because that's where we come to. Uh, because when you fall into complacency, it's very easy for these kings and queens and oligarchs to um, to take your freedoms away, to take your rights away, chip it one by one, little by little. Um, and a lot of people have been talking about this stuff for a really long time, um, including myself. Uh, you know, and I think a lot of people going back to to Matt, Matthew's statement that the torch is lit for revolution, you know, that's kind of what it that's kind of what it shows us is that a lot of people are ready for fundamental change. And that fundamental change isn't going to come uh, just because Bernie Sanders became president or or Joe Biden is now president. Um, that fundamental change is going to come from, uh, you know, each other, f us fighting for uh, us fighting for for that fundamental change, us us trying to make that fundamental change. Because when when we start doing it on the bottom level, then then those at the top have to follow because we're not following them; we're following each other. Uh, so so the, the power really lies in in us standing by each other uh, through through the struggle. Um, so that's that's sort of where I think uh, the future of the future of this movement lies, not the future of a party, but the future of this movement. It just lies in us sticking together in, in solidarity with each other. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a like and a subscribe and a share. Share it out with your friends, your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy content like this. I'm going to be putting out videos like this every single day so make sure you are subscribed to the channel uh, and make sure you hit that bell so you get all the alerts from all the videos that i put out there uh and uh and if you if you have the means to uh please consider making a, a donation i know we are all in tough times but if you if you can uh you can become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. You can check out various different ways of becoming a sustaining member or just make a one-time donation. Uh, while you're on my website, you can also check out all of my past comedy albums, which are available on all of your favorite streaming and uh, downloading websites, if that's, that's, if that's a way that you can you say that. Uh, <laughs> but they're also available on Bandcamp, which uh, right now is giving the most back to artists. Uh, but also on my Bandcamp, they are all available for a pay what you want if you would like to enjoy some live stand-up comedy albums from me and you don't have the means if you're in tough times that's totally fine you can download it for free go ahead and get it for free and enjoy it uh or if you do and if you want somebody else to enjoy it you can get it to them as a gift uh that's also a, a recommended thing uh but most importantly thank you guys for tuning into this video um, thank you guys for, for all the people that have already donated, that have already become patrons. I really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. And uh, until the next video, we'll see you on the road. Thank you, guys.